Far Cry 4 is a game I've wanted to platinum ever since I did Far Cry 5 last year, but when I decided to do it, two of the trophies were actually unobtainable, so I settled for Far Cry 6 instead. But for now, the trophies are finally obtainable, so today I'll be going for Far Cry 4's Platinum Trophy and its DLC trophies with my homie Vincent, aka Chin Dynamite. There are 58 trophies in this game including the DLC, so let's get into it. So Far Cry 4 takes place on an island named Karat, where the protagonist, Ajay Gale, is trying to give his mother's ashes to his half-sister named Lakshmana. However, Karat is controlled by a dictator named Pagan Min, who actually has connections with his mom as Lakshmana is their daughter. I'll talk more about the story in a little bit, but first I decided to get the two unobtainable trophies just in case they broke again. The first one of these is Community Surprise. This trophy wants me to play a top rated map on the map browser, but the problem was that whenever you tried to do this, it would say that no maps were found, making it impossible to play any map, let alone a top rated map. However, someone managed to find a workaround to get this. So what I needed to do was create an assault map on the editor, and then add a spawn point for me and add an enemy spawn. Then I saved the game and went to the main menu and I played the map and killed the enemy, although it doesn't matter if you die to them. And this happened. That worked! Community surprise! Let's go! If you do want to replicate this, the full method is on the trophy guide, which is in the description. The other trophy is Renaissance Man. This trophy required me to play each of the three modes of Battles of Karai, Outpost, Demon Mask, and Propaganda. This is very simple, but the problem with this one is that whenever we tried to play one of them, the game would force us into the DLC mode, Overrun, which is not a part of the trophy. And since we didn't even own Overrun, it would just straight up crash the game. But months later, whether well, Ubisoft intentionally fixed it or it fixed itself, whatever the case is, the mode started working. I wasn't sure if Battles of Karat were even populated, so to be safe, I got a team of boosters, consisting of Vincent and fellow YouTubers Marco Rose, Shaz Shake, and Bcaz Boy. And all we had to do was complete a match of each mode. We didn't have to win. This mode was kind of boring. It was more fun to screw around than to actually play. Push, 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 push. Ah, ah. What just happened down there? Boy, I got him. Oh, <laughs> I didn't what that. are you teabagging for? This is especially the case considering that there was a tryhard who had more kills than the entire lobby just destroying us. But it didn't matter. After completing the final mode, we got the trophy. Hey, Renaissance man, let's go. Yeah. Going back to the story, Ajay is on a bus to Karat with his companion named Darpon, and they get stopped by some guards who end up shooting up the bus. However, Pagan stops them and captures Ajay and Darpon. My goal now was to escape Pagan and try to save Darpon. After crashing a car, slaughtering some enemies, and getting caught in an avalanche, I completed the prologue. Prologue complete. Do you want to get a trophy for the tutorial or the prologue? No, you don't. From this point on, I'm not going to talk about the story too much unless I'm getting a trophy. A condom? What the frick? As I was getting used to the game, I encountered a bell tower. I need to get to the top of these, and when I do, I reveal part of the map. There are 17 of them in total, but I only need to liberate 8 of them for a trophy, but it was still worth liberating all 17 of them anyway. What? Vincent. Yeah. I just got song something called vintage porn. Yo. Another set of things I will need to liberate are outposts. These are just areas full of enemies and alarms that I need to take over, similar to other Far Cry games. I will get a trophy for liberating 12 outposts and one for liberating all of them, but on this one I got a trophy for liberating an outpost without triggering the alarms. Dang it. Tread lightly. Oh, wait. Oh, I had to do it without triggering an alarm. I thought I had to, like, not get alerted by the enemies. That outpost was a part of the story, and after this cutscene, I finally got my first story trophy. Oh, I completed Act 1. Welcome to Karat. After completing Act 1, I unlocked co-op, and I met the GOAT that Vincent would play as. Hurt the GOAT! If you don't know, Herc is also in Far Cry 5, which is where I first met him. But for now, I played as Herc because I need to liberate an outpost while playing as Herc. Boom. Brother in arms. Oh, snap, I can flip the car. What? 
Oh, oh victim. No time to explain. He is my studio post haste. How dare you? <laughs> what is wrong with this body? <laughs> what is that? Find me, suckers. <laughs> Find me. Don't run from me. He's in there. <laughs> oh, I killed him. Yeah. Let's see how much Kanye is going for. Do you follow him on Twitter? <laughs> he is gold. Oh, I would love to shoot the breeze with that young man. Bro, what? They put a Kanye reference in this game? What the heck? That's wild. While I was exploring, I met this weird woman who introduced me to karate films. These are two types of events, racing and survival, that involve me using vehicles. I will need to complete three of these events for a trophy later. You might need to complete multiple, that's fine. Oh! What the heck? One thing I do want to mention about the story is the fact that you can make choices in this game compared to the other Far Cry games. Basically, you have two characters, Amida and Sabal, and they both don't like each other or their decisions. Whenever this happens, the game made me choose between one of them, and the mission was very different depending on who I chose. The other character gets really mad if you don't choose them because they believe that the other person will be a horrible leader for Karat. Personally, I thought both of them were horrible, but I really liked this choice system. The next trophy I got was for tagging 25 enemies with the camera. Shutterbug. And my next one was a collectible trophy, which was reading 10 notes. Well read. There are quite a few trophies pertaining to different events, and the next one I want to touch on is Robin Hood. This one requires me to deliver three royal cargo trucks to liberate outposts. For the event, I can destroy them, but the trophy requires me to actually deliver them. And then another trophy is rewriting history. This one requires me to destroy 30 propaganda posters around the map. I'm gonna add this to the counter now, because I don't have any footage of this trophy for some reason. The next trophy was for unlocking 10 skills. Quick Learner. And another event trophy is Trigger Man. This one requires me to complete 3 assassinations or eye for an eye events. But we still have other trophies to go over, and this one was for spending 500,000 rupees in total. Make it rain! And then one of my outposts got raided. Whenever I'm near an outpost I've liberated, there's a chance that Pagan's men will attack them, and I need to protect them three times for a trophy. These are pretty annoying whenever I was just fast traveling and then the moment I tried to leave, they just attack. But you can just ignore the attack and you won't get penalized for failing. Once I realized that, I completely stopped caring. Next, I crafted 5 upgrades for my equipment. Tricked out. Then I rescued 15 hostages during hostage rescue missions. Stop! Stop! Uh, no one left behind. Rescue 15 hostages. Okay, I managed to do it. Finished the last karate film. Alright, that's the end of the race right there. Gearhead and killed four enemies with one explosion. Quad kill, there we go. Perfect. Now I want to talk a little about karma events. These are random events that occur, and after completing them, I get some karma points. These points increase my karma level, and the higher this level is, the better my discounts are at trading posts, and I also can upgrade my guns for hire, who are just friendly NPCs. For a trophy, I need to get to karma level 2 and purchase a guns for hire upgrade. And speaking of that trophy, I got it here. The good fight. Going back to trophy spam for a little bit, here I deliver my last cargo truck. Robin Hood. Completed my last assassination. What? Oh, how, oh, how do y'all even know that, bro? I shouldn't have gotten caught that much, but it's whatever. It's all right, I got it done. <laughs> Trigger man. Killed an enemy from 60 meters away with an arrow. Ooh, too high. Let's go, from a distance. Defended one of my outposts for the third time. Defender. And liberated my eighth bell tower. End transmission. Now I finally want to mention something about the story. So eventually I come across the Gale homestead, like Ajay's family home. 
and I find these two stoners named Yogi and Reggie. They're obviously not supposed to be here, but they end up drugging Ajay, and he wakes up to something odd. What is going on? Why is there nudity? Why is she nude? Why is her- I can't put this in the video? The nudity isn't the important part, what's important is what happened after. Basically, Yogi and Reggie sent me to a woman named Noir to participate in her arena. The arena has five ways of enemies that increase in difficulty and can include animals and humans. The catch is that I don't have my normal loadout and I have to resort to using whatever weapons they give me and use the environment to my advantage. I will need to reach rank 5 in the arena later on. We still have a long way to go before we get there, but for now I snipe two enemies with one bullet. There we go, two birds. I should not have been trying to go for that trophy right now, but screw it. And now I was finally going to get a story trophy. The trophy was going to be for deciding the fate of this man named Paul Harmon, or Dupleur. He actually has connections with Noir, the woman from the arena, because he killed her family, which is why she's in the position she's in, though she didn't know her family was dead. The mission leading up to this was a very annoying stealth section, which is probably only annoying because of skill issues, but here's some clips of me getting mad. Way! Of course you were just there, bro. Of course he was just there. Of course I did that. Of course I did that. I did something stupid like that. Of course I would miss my shot. Stop spanking her! What the frick? You weird, homie! You weird, bro! Man, you deserve to get teabagged for that. Nope. No! Oh, they shot. If he didn't shoot, I would've been fine. Now I'm back at spawn. I literally killed all these guys, bro. Honestly, I had some way worse moments, but I didn't clip any of those. Just know that I was not happy with this mission. But after that section, I knocked out Dupleur, carried him out of the base with the guards being pretty unhappy with me, and I delivered him to the Golden Pass. One down. It was at this point when I started to focus more on the story and less on the open world and trophies, so I only got two before the next story trophy. The first one was for running over 25 enemies. Roadkill! And the second one was flying for 5,000 meters with the wingsuit, and I did something stupid when I got the trophy. I died! <laughs> I died as I made it, but 5,000 meters total, like a bird. That's not what I meant to do, I did not mean to die. That is not what I meant to do at all, but makes for good content. <laughs> and now we're at the next story trophy, which was for deciding the fate of Noir, surprisingly. See, she's a target because, well, she's kind of been letting people die. So the Golden Path thought she needed to go as well, even though Pagan was forcing her to run the arena. So I did a pretty short mission where I snuck into the arena, killed a bunch of enemies to end up confronting her, and this is what happened. People of Kirat, I've given you winners to cheer for. I don't want to kill her. To mock. None so bloody. Pity. Where's my family? I'm sorry, Noor. No! I'm so sorry. Sorry. Pagan. Pagan had them killed years ago. I don't need your pity. I want my family back. I gave them this taste for blood. Your blood. Mine. Isn't that what you want? More blood! Here! Hey! Now I'm free. Oh! That's not what I expected. That is not what I expected at all. Two down. Well, with that interesting mission done, I encountered the next story trophy, which was for discovering Shangri-La. No, not that Shangri-La. Get out of here. I mean this Shangri-La. So let's talk about how we even got here. 
So I encountered Yogi and Reggie again after I survived Noir's arena, and after Aj threatened them a little bit, they told me about Shangri-La and how this guru made it there using a thonka that was torn to pieces and scattered around Kirai. So they told me the location of one of the pieces and I went to go get it. When I grabbed it, I was sent into this weird place called Shangri-La where I play as this man named Kalanag. In this place, the enemies are these masked beings and I had a tiger as my companion. My goal is to reach something called the Bell of Enlightenment and I had to ring it to cleanse the area, I guess. Getting into fights with multiple of these dudes was a death sentence and could be a little scary at times. Bye. Bye. Uh, I actually died? Uh-oh. I have made mistakes. I have made mistakes. Mistakes were made. But eventually I rang the bell and somehow managed to wake up at the homestead where I kicked out Yogi and Reggie and got my trophy. That was interesting. Overdose. Then the next trophy I got was for crafting my 15th syringe. Oh, Dr. Feelgood, craft 15 syringes. That was a little bit of a delayed trophy, I didn't even expect to get that. It wasn't delayed, it's just that I auto-crafted a health syringe after manly crafting other syringes, and I didn't notice it. And then I got the second to last story trophy, which was for deciding the fate of Yuma. Yuma was the most dangerous of the three subordinates as she was very manipulative and drugged Ajay a few times. Her drugs actually foreshadowed the end of the story without me realizing it. She also had the most unique mission, since hers ended with this boss fight against Kalanag. Kalanag actually turned out to be her, and after snapping back to reality, I got the trophy. Hat trick. With her down, the only one that was left was Pegamin himself. So after trashing his fortress, I went straight to him. And when I confronted him, he gave me a choice. And to be honest, I think I chose the wrong one. Say, you have two choices. One, you could shoot me, boring, or you could sit down, enjoy some food. And you and I will go scatter your mother's ashes together. Do you still die regardless? Nah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it just ended just like that. Wow, I could have added a lot more had I just freaking left them alive. <laughs> well, that was an interesting story. The king is dead. I'm not gonna lie. I'm watching Sparing Pagan. I'm not satisfied with what I did. I wish I would have spared him. I wish I would have spared him. I regret that. But, uh, what's done is done. I can't change my decision. But now, let's move on to the other trophies. The first one was for performing a takedown from a buzzer. Got it. The sky is falling. Dang, I got both of them! <laughs> I didn't think that takedown was gonna be that cool. Then I got Vincent back on, and I performed a takedown from the passenger seat of our vehicle. Got him. Changing lanes. First try. And then I destroyed my third Pagan's Wrath Convoy. These are groups of three enemy vehicles that roam around, and I gotta kill them all. But something weird happened when we destroyed the third one. <laughs> what the freak happened? I got a trophy! Let's eliminate three Pagan's Wrath Convoys. <laughs> what? I mean, we did it. We did do it, yeah. <laughs> what the freak was that? Peak. Peak. <laughs> then we finished the sixth hunting quest. <laughs> oh, that was it. <laughs> Remember that one time, Marquise? Who needs roads anyway? No, no, no! Yeah, I won that bad. <laughs> and then we completed three bomb defusing quests. These quests had us doing exactly what it says, defusing bombs. We're supposed to do these undetected, but I did this with Vincent. So... Defuse all bombs while being detected. Oh, my fault, man. 
No! Ow. Oh my god! Do we lose it? Oh my god! Uh. Do it, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Diffuser. Then about all attachments and paint schemes for a weapon? Custom fitted. And then we conquer two fortresses. These are basically outposts, but just bigger and with more enemies, and they belong to each of the bosses. They start off at very hard difficulty, but after dealing with the boss, the fortress is weakened. W! Got it, got it. Display of fortitude. Then I kill my 25th enemy with a drive-by. Actually, screw it. Oh, there we go. Worth it. Drive-by. And we liberated the 12th outpost. Oh, dude. Deliver us from evil. Death from above. <laughs> what is that? Help me. And then we completed three Kira Fashion Week quests. This one requires me to find special animals, kill them with a certain weapon, and skin them for a guy named Mr. Chiffon. During one of these, we found this rhino, and I'm just gonna let the clip speak for itself. God, no. I see- Oh! He gangsta! He gangsta! He gangsta! Shoot him! Shoot him! Freaking shoot him! I'm shooting him, bruh! He means business? Oh, he means business! Shoot him! Shoot him! Oh, he's gonna kill me! Shoot him! Shoot him! Oh my god, shoot him! He's gonna do some things to me. I got him. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, screw you, fool. Come on. No, I don't. Oh, yes, I do. Dang, that thing is fat! What is that? The rarest game. And the last thing Vincent and I did was liberate the final outpost. Yeah. I'm just gone. Uh. All clear. Then I bought three items for the Gale homestead. And the exterior upgrade. Fixer upper. And then I clean up my last collectible trophies, which were the money wheels, the lost letters, and Yalung's masks. The next set of trophies I clean up were related to enemies. The first one was for burning 50 enemies. The second one was for killing 25 enemies with an elephant. Tusker. The third one was for killing 25 enemies with mortars. Reign of Death. And the last one, and the most annoying one, was for distracting 15 enemies with rocks. This one shouldn't have been annoying, especially since I did what the guide said and let the enemies look at the rock and then walk back to their position. But for some reason, most of them didn't count, and I spent an hour trying to go for it before I gave up. But I tried again later, and this time I killed all the enemies after distracting them, and then reset the outpost, and sure enough... Ah, finally! Misdirection! So this was the strat. Literally just do this one, kill all the dudes, and then leave the thing, and then start from the beginning that way. Finally! This trophy sucks, bro! How is distracting 15 enemies the most annoying trophy in the game? That makes no sense, bro. The second to last trophy of the base game was reaching rank 5 in the arena. Honestly, there's not much to talk about with this one, as the arena is pretty repetitive, and I was just repeating the weapon challenges over and over to get arena points. And weapon challenges are apparently the best way to get points, by the way. I will say that the weapon I had the best time with was the PKM LMG, because the ammo is pretty scarce here, and the PKM has a lot in its mag and the reserve, so if you're looking for a good weapon in the arena, use this. The People's Champ I had one trophy left in the base game, but I decided to put it on hold and go for the Valley of the Yetis DLC. This DLC starts off with a helicopter that Ajay was in crash landing in the Himalayas. They were in the Himalayas to find some relic that Yuma was looking for, and they were trying to get it before her. 
Ajay tries to find the pilot of the heli, but ends up having to fight this weird cult, and they're the main enemy of this DLC. I found myself going to this relay station full of enemies, and after dealing with them, I took over the station and got my first trophy. Home sweet home. Something that I had to deal with in this DLC is night raids. First of all, the structure of this DLC is that you do a mission in the day, and then you have to fend off enemies at night, and this lasts for 5 nights. Every night gets more difficult, but it was never unmanageable. After surviving the first night, I got a trophy. Night Survivor The story didn't really interest me that much, so we're not really going to talk about it. But there are other trophies to get, and there are two that I need to look out for. The first one being Master Builder. This trophy requires me to complete every relay station upgrade quests, which are marked by exclamation marks on the map. Most of these have me driving cargo trucks to the station, but there's also mountain climbing to get weapons, defending yaks from predators, and getting supplies. After completing the first one, I got a trophy. Builder. The other trophy I need to focus on is Master of the Awakened. This one requires me to kill 5 yetis. Yetis are pretty tanky and can do a lot of damage if I'm not careful. After I do enough damage to it, they cower down and I need to do a takedown on them and complete a quick button mashing sequence. After this first one, I got a trophy. I got him. Spiritual Hunter. Trash, homie. You trash. After that, I kinda just ignored the story and went for all the upgrade quests. So here, I finished the last one. Master Builder. And here, I killed the last Yeti. Master of the Awakened. And now we'll jump to the final mission, where I found the relic and encountered lots of Yetis. Great. This section was very easy though. All I had to do was shoot the relic's roots, and then shoot the relic. Boom. Alright. I turn into a Yeti, what? Alright, well, that's that done. Awakened! And finally, I learned all the skills. This took a little bit though, as I needed over 30 skill points to learn all of them. So I found an XP farm, which is in the trophy guide. I went to Pagan's Fortress, did a takedown on this jug up here, shot this dude in the head, then took down this jug at the bottom, saved, and let myself die. Every run of this gave me one skill point, and so I repeated it until I got every point I needed. And... Last one. Fully loaded, learn all skills, and... Master of Kirat. Let's go. What a W. What a W. It took me 32 hours to get this platinum. See, I enjoyed this game. It was really fun to play this game. I like the story. I like the endings, for sure. Like, the story isn't the best thing I've ever played, but I really freaking like the endings. I like how there are multiple endings compared to 5 and 6, and I find it interesting how I was right to not like Amida nor Sabal as leaders. Because for me, I sided with Amida in the end, and I think this clip will show you how much I really did not like her being the leader. No, 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 watch this. Get out of here! That makes me feel a little better about getting the worst possible ending for this game. Overall, it was fun. Didn't like the misdirection trophy. Terrible trophy, but overall, this was a smooth experience. The DLC is kind of just average to me. The story, I won't say it's boring, but it's not like the best thing ever either. Like, it's just average. It's not bad, not good. It's just whatever to me. I'm just glad to have finally done this, because it, it was a lot of fun. I, I did enjoy the story. I, it's, def, it's better than sixes, I'll say that for sure, but I don't know if it's better than fives. I can't really say, because I really enjoyed five, but I think this is better than six for sure. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. When this platinum was broken, I decided to do Far Cry 6, so if you want to see me platinum that, it's on the end screen, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace out, y'all.